Today we're going to be looking at how to program a 128x64 ITC OLED display as a stats dashboard for your Raspberry Pi. I use the script on my Raspberry Pi desktop case, which I'll link to in the video description. A lot of people have asked me for some more in-depth setup and programming instructions to get it running. These displays are quite commonly available online. You can find them on Amazon, eBay, Banggood and AliExpress. I'll put some links in the video description. Let's start by hooking up the display to the Raspberry Pi. You'll need a 4-wire female-to-female jumper. The colours on the cable don't matter, they're just there to help you keep track of which wire goes to which terminal. The OLED display pins are labelled on the front, which seems to confuse a lot of people, especially when they've installed the display into the case or housing and the front area above the screen is no longer visible. The pin order is most commonly ground, VCC, SCL and then SDA. Just don't copy this arrangement, make sure you check your own display as there are versions of this display that have the VCC and ground pins the other way around. Since these displays don't have reverse polarity protection, if you connect them incorrectly, even just once, they'll probably be damaged and no longer work, even if you correct the wiring again afterwards. Plug your ribbon cable into these pins and then make a note of which color you've got connected to which of the four pins. Next you'll need to plug the other ends of the jumpers into your Raspberry Pi's GPIO pins. The Pi's GPIO pinout diagram can be found quite easily online. Make sure that your Pi is off and the power is disconnected before plugging or unplugging jumpers from the GPIO pins. You've got a few options for the ground and VCC jumpers. I usually plug the ground jumper into pin 14, but you can use any pin labelled ground. I plug the VCC jumper into pin 1, which is a 3.3V power pin. Again, you can use any of the 3.3V or 5V power pins, as this display can run on both 3.3 and 5V. Next we'll need to connect the communication jumpers SCL and SDA, which just get plugged into the corresponding GPIO pins. Plug SCL into pin 5 and SDA into pin 3. Don't get confused between the GPIO numbers and the pin numbers. Ignore the GPIO numbers on the diagram and just go by the SDA and SCL labels. Check all of your connections again and you're then ready to power up your Pi and program the display. Once you've booted up your Pi, you should be on the Raspberry Pi OS desktop. To get the display working, we're going to be running a Python script. But we'll first need to enable I2C or I2C communication on the Pi, as this is how it communicates with the display. You can either do this through the preferences menu or by typing this command into the terminal. Select Interfacing Options, then I2C, and then select Yes and reboot the Pi. Once your Pi is rebooted, you'll need to check that the following three libraries have been installed. You may already have them installed, but it's worth checking. Once you've done that, it's time to check that your Pi is able to see that your display is correctly connected. You can do this by typing in the following command. You should then see a table which shows a single pair of characters in it. This is your I2C address of your display. If your table is returned blank, then you've either got a wiring issue or I2C communication isn't turned on. If you get a table full of characters, then you've probably made a wiring mistake as this happens if SDA is shorted to ground. Don't proceed with trying to get the script to work if you can't get the correct response in this step. If your Pi isn't able to see the display that's connected to it, then it won't be able to communicate with it to get anything displayed. Next let's have a look at the Python script and how to install it. 
The script is one of the example scripts provided in the Adafruit Python SSD 1306 library, with some tweaks. There's a note on the GitHub page to say that this is a depreciated library, but this doesn't mean that you can't use it or that it'll no longer work. It just means that they have developed a better and more recent set of libraries. We're not so much interested in the library as we are in the stats example script, so we're going to use it anyway. Download the script by typing in the following commands. Next, navigate to your library's directory and run the setup script to install the library. Make sure that the Python version you choose here matches the version you're going to run the actual script in. Next, navigate to the examples directory and execute the stats script. You should then see your PyStats stats shown on the display. You can see the text isn't very clear, and there's a few weird characters on the display and the CPU temperature isn't displayed, so we're going to try and fix those now. These modifications to the script are shown in the guide linked in the video description. Navigate to the examples folder and then use a Python IDE to open up the stats script so that you can edit it. I'm not going to go over the changes to each line of code, rather just copy these two portions of the script from the guide and paste them into your script on your PA. Running the script you can now see that the characters are gone and the temperature is being displayed. This is where I left the display in my original video, but it looks a lot better if you use a better font. This allows the text to fit within the width limit and uses the full height of the display. So let's look at that next. First let's change the display size so that we're using all of the display's pixels and the text will be a bit clearer. This display is actually a 128x64 display, not the 128x32 display which is set by default. If you run the script you'll now see that the text is much clearer, but it's all bunched up in the top half. We can play around with the spacing, but this font is just not that great for the stats layout, so let's look at changing the font. You'll first need to download the new font through the link in the guide. Once the font is downloaded, open the downloads folder and extract the zip file. Look for the standard pixel operator font and copy the font into the same directory as your stats script. You'll then need to copy the file name of your font into the script. Comment out the line which loads the default font. Uncomment the line which loads the replacement font and paste your file name into it, keeping the inverted commas on either side. If you run the script, you'll see that the text is now a bit taller and is in your new font, but it's still bunched up at the top of the display, so the last thing we need to do is adjust the layout. This is a bit of a guessing game until you get it looking the way you'd like it to. You can just copy the numbers that I've used. When you're done, you should have a clear stats display running on your PA. This will continue to run as long as you've got your IDE open. But we want it to run all the time and to run on startup, so there's one last thing we need to do. Copy the stats script and the font into your home directory. To get the script to run automatically on startup, open cron tab and then add a line to the end of the file to run the script.
You might need to change the directory to suit the directory that you've got your script saved into. Also don't forget to add the and at the end to tell the Pi to continue starting up and to run the script in the background. Save the file when you exit and then try rebooting your Pi to see if it's working correctly. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more tech and electronics projects, tutorials and reviews.